Hello everyone, and welcome back to Soccer Unboxing. So, welcome to a double figure unboxing video today. So, this wasn't originally my plan, but I was going to record one of the figures that I got last week in its own separate video. But then I had to do B-roll for my April and May haul, and then because it's summer, the weather is getting pretty hot, so I just called it there. And then I couldn't really find a good day to, you know, do a video for it. And then another anticipated figure was shipped and I got her in the mail. So I thought, why not do them both in one video because they're both one fourth figures. They're both made by binding. So yes, I'm quite excited to finally get these guys out of their packaging because I've been very much looking forward to the both of these. So, so without further ado, I'll quickly show off the two figures that I'll be unboxing in today's video. So starting off with the first figure here, I can't quite show them both in my hands because the boxes are very big and heavy, but the first binding figure we have right here is the Binding Creator's Opinion 1 4th Queen Bee Honey figure. So I really love the design of this character, I thought the bee theme was quite unique so I decided to pick her up. So yes, very large box overall and quite heavy so I'll have to put this down but yeah very excited to unbox this figure for today and now the next figure I'll be unboxing which is one I've been very excited for and that is the again binder creators opinion 1 4th neo blue bunny version so yes this is illustrated by of course the legendary Saki Amama who is known for of course the Caroline Yuri bunny and I you know when I saw this go up for pre-order I'm like I have to pre-order this um, I don't know how she is in the aftermarket right now, but, you know, this, you know, I'd really want to have next to, of course, Caroline Yuri. I do have the original, of course, and yeah, the box, I really do love the design of it all, like, the jewels and just this nice shade of blue. It is, I believe, kind of similar to the Caroline Yuri. I'm not too sure if any of, like, the jewel designs are different and such. I mean, obviously, the bad box is pink and this is blue. But yeah, obviously, I'm very excited to open this one up just to go with, of course, Caroline Yuri. So yes, without further ado, let us, of course, get on to the general information about both of these figures. So starting off with some general information for both of these figures. So they're both, of course, manufactured by binding. Now, gonna start off with the Queen Bee Honey figure. So originally she was supposed to release in March of 2023, but she ended up getting pushed into April 2023 and then got once again pushed into May of 2023. And the Mio Blue figure got pushed from May of 2023 into June of 2023. Now moving on to the dimensions. So starting off again with the Queen Bee figure, she is a 1 4th scale and she measures roughly 9.75 inches tall. And of course, the Meal Blue figure is also a 1 4th scale and she measures 12.09 inches tall. So now moving on to where I got these figures from, so I got them both off of Nin Nin Game. Now unfortunately, when I pre-ordered these figures, I didn't take a screenshot of all of the shipping costs for them or the various shipping options, you know, I had for them. Um, I might see if I can possibly pull it up for them. If not, I'll probably give another sort of one-fourth as an example. You know, kneeling or sitting one-fourth specifically by binding, just to give you guys an idea of the estimated shipping cost for these girls. But starting with the Queen Bee figure, so on in in game, she was $335.60 USD. The shipping was $68.60. Now note, I did end up having to pay an additional 15 USD, so that bumped it up to around like 83 USD. So just a you know a little bit of heads up on there. While it's nice that an in-game does give a shipping cost, it's an estimated shipping cost, and you might have to pay extra if they get it a little bit wrong. So roughly the total cost for shipping. Again, the picture I'm showing up on screen is the invoice I got without the additional extra little bit I had to pay for shipping. 
So she is roughly what I paid for is $419.20. It's a definitely, you know, quite the expensive purchase. And moving on to the cost for the Mio Blue figure. So on an in game, she was $324.79 USD. Shipping was $64.67 USD. Uh, note that I, for both of these, I did use the FedEx DHL option. Thankfully for the Mio Blue, I didn't have to pay any additional shipping. And her grand total was $389.46 USD. So now moving on to the packages that these two came in. Now, Ninin Game really doesn't pad their, you know, packaging like Ami Ami does. Um, they pretty much like fit the box that they come into the size of the figure and they really only use kind of thin bubble wrap and it's like roughly two layers of that but they don't do what Ami Ami does with all of that protective padding which I guess is kind of nice so that you don't get you know a lot of extra shipping you have to pay an additional shipping cost just because of that extra padding but of course that bubble wrap you know if i do have some footage of me just kind of opening the box and showing you all what i mean that bubble wrap is kind of thin and there might be an off chance that without that extra protection that your box might come damage and god forbid the figure breaks so i just give a heads up if you order off of ninin game it's nice that you know they do provide like binding and native figures with their bonuses but you might be taking a risk with the shipping, with the packaging that they do, because I would like a little bit more protective padding, or at least like maybe some thicker bubble wrap I think would have been nice. So yeah, just a heads up about that if you do order from their website. So here are both of the boxes. They're very big overall. They pretty much take up this whole table if you put them side by side. And yeah, um, so, you know, quick context. I did order these off of, of course, Ninin Game, which is, of course, where, you know, I usually get these figures from because, you know, native, once again, you can only use credit card on there. They do have, I believe, a flat rate shipping, which I think is nice. But again, I just prefer to use, um, you know, PayPal currently. Um, that's pretty much like the only option I have at the moment. So yes, I go to Ninin Game because these tend to have the bonus. And I do have a quick story specifically about the Queen Bee Miss Honey. So, you know, I get the figure in, I'm obviously excited, and then I realize, hey, where is the bonus postcard that is supposed to come with this figure? So, yeah, they didn't have the postcard for the figure. So yeah, I was a little bit peeved about that because I feel like they did advertise it in the description um, when she first went up for pre-order. And yeah, apparently, you know, depends on the supplier they get it from, they might not be able to get the bonus, which I'm kind of fine with because I noticed that the postcard for this one is, you know, kind of not safe for work. So, you know, I didn't really mind it too much. And yes, and then I gave me a blue one, and I thought I wasn't gonna get the bonus postcard with her. Uh, yeah, it turns out I actually did get the postcard for this figure, so yeah. Um, unfortunately, for like this video that I'll be posting, I won't show this because it is not safe for work. Um, I do kind of wish that they kept those sort of safe for work like postcards. Um, that's just my personal opinion, but yeah. I managed to get the postcard for Mio Blue, but unfortunately not for the Queen Bee figure, so yes. If you do want to collect the postcards, I'd say, you know, you know, while Ninin, I feel like, has been reliable for me, I mean, maybe this is just a rare occasion when, you know, unfortunately they just didn't get the postcard in for this figure. Um, you know, definitely order it from Native so you actually get the postcard guaranteed, but yeah. Um, I'm fine. I guess I feel fine without it. Um, you know, I do like collecting these, but, you know, I don't mind, because again, it was a little bit of a saucy postcard and you know i prefer it kind of safe for work but yeah i'm just excited that i did get of course the figure itself at the end of the day so yes no further ado um after that whole lengthy story um i think i'm gonna start with um the queen bee miss honey figure so yes i'll put me a blue to the side and we'll get started with this one right here
So yes, we're gonna get started with this one right here. Now, also a heads up, um, Nin and Game actually sent me an email saying that they, you know, they do give like estimated shipping, but sometimes they do have to charge you a little bit more, um, depending if they got their estimate wrong. And I had to pay like an additional 15 USD for this, which I have to say, you know, not bad. I mean, it's not like they asked for an extra 50 or so, which would have been ridiculous. But yeah, I just be wondering about that. Like, it's nice that Nin and Game gives estimates for their shipping, but it's not obviously 100% accurate. So yeah. Also, I did unbox her, mostly because again, the whole postcard situation, I thought, oh, maybe they slipped it into the box and that wasn't the case. So like, I unboxed her like, and just like opened the box up itself just to see if it was in there, which it wasn't. So yeah, but anyway, um, let's get started with actually taking the figure out of its packaging. So yes, I kind of have to have her like this a little bit um, because the front is obviously they're out. So yeah, I kind of have to do that. So I'm going to try and be as careful as possible. Again, I'm going to, you know, also upload this video to Patreon, like the uncensored version. So we're going to see how that goes. Cause again, this, this is kind of my first, like, you know, not safe for work unboxing. So I'm a little bit nervous about doing this on, you know, what I can like try and censor. But yeah, I'm going to try and take her out of the packaging and hopefully, you know, nothing Nothing too bad shows up on the camera. Okay, first part wasn't too bad. I just took her out. She just had some plastic. So, um, she already comes attached with her wing. She has some extra ear parts. Um, <laughs> obviously, the front part of this, um, yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be so weird. Um, looks great so far, um, at the front. Um, shoes look great. I. Some people maybe complain that the shoes look kind of ugly. I kind of like them. I like the design, the gold. Um, and yeah, so I'm gonna put this down on the side and get the other pieces out so I can actually <gasps> clothe her a little bit better. So yeah. So it took me a while to get the accessories out of the blister packaging, but here they all are. Um, I'm going to try and follow the instructions to like, you know, the best of my ability. So the first thing I'm going to start off with are the ears, or in this case, the antenna, because she is a bee. And yeah, they look very nice. The gold is super nice. I do like the purple that they used for this figure. It's like a dark purple, which I do like. Uh, maybe the green part could have used a little bit of shading. I feel like it's just maybe one color maybe there's like hints of like a lighter yellow in it but yeah maybe the green part could have used some shading so yeah 
like with any sort of bunny figure, you do have the replacement peg, so... So the next step, it actually tells you, you can actually take her leg off here. Uh, there is a piece of her like outfit that kind of actually pops off. So I'm going to see how this is going to go. I hope it's not too bad of a fit. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. Um. So yes, her whole leg, you know, pretty much comes off and that's mostly just to put in the right cup um, for her breasts and yeah <laughs> interesting that this whole part comes off so yeah I'll get to that and yeah so it's not too bad to put these on um, they do differentiate which is right and which is left which I think is nice and these I believe are also magnetic which is also quite convenient so I'll just slide this into place So yeah, overall, getting the cups on wasn't too bad, they're magnetic, which is convenient. Although her left one, it does feel a little bit weak, like it doesn't exactly like fold to like the mold, essentially. Um, it does kind of droop. It doesn't thankfully like come off completely unless you probably shake this around. Uh, but that's a little bit like, I wish maybe the magnet was a little bit stronger so it had like a better hold. But you know, I feel like the magnets are like convenient, but you know. Just be warned about that if you get this, unless you guys got somehow stronger magnets than I did. It does kind of droop the left cup. Um, but after that, yeah, I'm as well show these ones off, which I'm not going to show in this video. And those are the ones where it's like the cups, but they're like folded down so you can have her exposed a little bit more. But yeah, those are those pieces. And then we have the next piece that I'm going to put on, which is the, the crotch part of it. So yeah um this also does have a magnet to it so i'm just gonna like slide this on it shouldn't be too hard so yeah at least now i can turn this figure around and so far she's looking fantastic after that we have a couple more pieces that i'll show off i might interchange one of the pieces on camera um the <laughs> the first piece right here is like this dripping Honey made of a like translucent piece. Um, I'm sure you guys know where this piece goes. Um, can't really display her with this, so that's gonna stay there. And it kind of looks like something else, which is a little bit weird. Uh, after that, we have another blister part right here, where it has her alternate hand, which is supposed to, I believe, hold. Um, this wine glass that she has so yeah very nice and then we have um some pieces with the honey which one of them is supposed to kind of go into this glass and the other one it kind of like it's supposed to be for her hands so yeah um i don't look at the instruction i actually forgot which hand goes with what okay okay so conveniently, the glass comes, you know, you can actually separate it. So the glass is actually supposed to go into this hand right here. Okay, I might have to readjust the hand a little bit because um the weight of i feel like it's not like correct in terms of the way i'm displaying this um or maybe it is and i because i feel like the glass is very like heavy um and it doesn't quite look like it's the way it's supposed to look like so i got to fix that later and yeah so um i think in the b-roll i'll actually show the interchangeable hand of course so yeah 
this is how she's looking. I do think she looks fantastic overall. The shading is very well done. She does have some hints of pink underneath her hair, which I think is also nice. So yes, um, not too bad of an assembly process overall. I do wish with this figure some parts were a little bit more like connected. Like I wish maybe the magnets were a little bit stronger and maybe you know, I'll have to see later about this wine glass. You know, I might have to adjust it because I am doing this from like the back of her. I have to kind of do this from the front, but yeah. I'll adjust this a little bit more and then, yeah. Um, <laughs> so very still excited to have her. And now we're going to actually be moving on to the Mew Blue figure. So yes, right here I have the Mew Blue figure and of course I did get her with the postcard. Now, I'll probably of course show this on camera but I'll have to censor it because it is of course not safe for work and of course this video will be up on my Patreon but it'll be an uncensored version so of course um, I'll show off more like the various parts of each of these figures but yeah, yeah I'm very excited to open this up just again because you know I really love Saki and Mama's character designs so yes obviously I'm very excited to open this up because of course I really love Saki and Mama's character designs and yeah uh, so without further ado, let's get to unboxing her. Yeah, so again, kind of have to turn it this way because um, she's a little bit exposed. I also forgot to mention that these two do have the same base, which is like a mirror sort of base. Um, obviously, if you do dis not display her with anything down there, I guess that's the reason why. Uh, personally, I don't really display them with these bases. I, you know, for me at least, I don't see a point in doing so. It's just going to take up a smidge more space. So yeah, I tend to just leave these bases in their uh, packaging. Uh, Caroline Yuri, I believe, also came with a similar base. Um, in terms of like what I like in like um, binding figures, some of them do come with a fluffy base, which I do quite like. So I tend to display them with it just so um, they don't like rub off against the surface. But yeah, so this base is gonna stay in the packaging, and yeah, she is really wrapped up. I can't even see her face back here because it's really wrapped in um, bubble wrap. So yeah. I'm gonna quickly get her out of the packaging. So yeah, getting her out, um, she's pretty wrapped up, especially with, of course, the black bag of discreetness, as I like to call it. And yeah, so again, yeah, plastic for, like, her hands up against her hair. And I think, yeah, so far she looks amazing. The eyes are absolutely fantastic and detailed, so, um, <laughs> I don't know how much this covers, so I have to be careful with this, but... I might have to like kind of hide it a little bit like this. Okay, so I'm gonna have to hold her like this. I don't know if anyone can see from like back there. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna get like the individual parts out. So yeah, here she is. Um, I don't know how much I can show, especially I'm covering her backside a little bit. Uh, cause I don't know, cause I feel like from certain angles you can't see down there so yeah i of course i also have her accessories that she comes with 
Um, so the first thing I'm definitely going to put on is the crotch piece. Now, you do have to remove the little diamond that's on her outfit to put this in, uh, which I didn't realize. So yeah, shouldn't be too bad. So yeah, I put the covering on. Um, it's not 100% flush, but it's close enough, so that's good. Um, so she actually has like different like plastic pieces that are already attached. Yeah, so we have actually like like the plastic um, pieces for like her ears, as well as the cups underneath. Actually, do come with the own shrink plastic. That's a little bit. I don't know why, but they're there and now we have the two cups which yeah I really like the blue that they used for this and these ones aren't actually magnetized you actually have to put them in they do have like a peg to them Alright, now I can turn the figure around. The cups weren't too bad. Now, I don't know, I probably did put them in the right spot, but the one thing I kind of noticed is I feel like where her <laughs> her nips are, um, and the, the shading around that's supposed to be like a pink, I feel like that maybe on mine they kind of overdid it a little bit. Um, I wish it wasn't so much pink on top, um, where, you know, the, the cups don't really cover it fully. And it's just like, you have just this like bright pink there, which I wish they probably would have like toned down a little bit. So yeah, I don't know. I'm just not too big a fan of the way that looks. Um, I'll see, you know, what I can do about that later, but yeah. Of course, the other thing she comes with is like the, the top parts like down, which I'll show later. And the, uh, last part, of course, are the ears, which shouldn't be too hard to put in. So yes, here she is complete. Overall, very fantastic. Assembly wasn't too bad overall. And yeah, I'm very excited to like have this in my collection. I'm excited to put her next to Caroline Yuri. And yeah, so I'll be getting on to the bigger hole for both of the figures, which is gonna be quite a lot. So now moving on to both of the figure boxes. They're both definitely very massive overall. I fit them both like straight up as you can see in the footage at the beginning um, in an Amiyami size 160 box and then there is a little bit of room to put other figures if you are interested in doing so for storage but yeah the queen bee uh, honey figure I really do like the honey dripping down the side and just the overall box design it does have some elements from the figure on the box and then we have Mio Blue's box which I really do like the sort of you know blue and gold that they're going for it's very nice overall nice combination of colors and I believe it has some design elements that might be the same as the Caroline Yuri box, except of course that box is pink, but yeah. Both very gorgeous, but quite large uh, Binding Bunny boxes overall. So going into assembling these figures, so I had to censor the instructions because there's a lot of, you know, stuff showing and both of these figures come with a mirrored base, which I don't display them with because I find them unnecessary and they do take up quite a bit of space 
and they both come naked out of the box so that's why we're going to be seeing a lot of black bars in the censored version of this video. Uh, she has this crotch covering, I don't know what else you'd call it, but very nice dark purple to it and I do like the gold, little pop of gold on there as well. And we have this honey piece that's supposed to go down there but I won't be showing it off in this video but it doesn't really look like honey 100%. Um, it looks like something else, but it's supposed to be honey. Now, basically, there is a magnet to this, um, so yeah, I had to kind of like put it right there. It pops on easily, and then there's like a little piece in the back where you have to push it in to, you know, peg it in there. Next, we have the breast cups. And these are the ones where they're down, so you can see, um, her nips. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, very nice paintwork on them. And with the gold and the green and the dark purple, I do think it's very nice overall, but again, we'll be showing in this video, and they do have magnets. And here are the ones that actually cover her breasts. So yeah, basically, this figure uses magnets, which I do quite like. Um, sometimes a peg is a lot easier, but yeah, I don't mind magnets too much. So yes, both of these cups, uh, I believe, are labeled left and right to make it a lot more easy to differentiate the two. But yeah, overall, very nice sculpt on both of these, as well as paint work. Um, I kind of linger on these for quite a while. But yes, so these are obviously supposed to go up on her breast, but before we do that, at least for the right one, you do kind of have to remove this little piece on, I guess, her garter? I'm not too sure what it's called, but you pull that out, and I had to take her whole right leg off, which you just gotta wiggle a little bit, it's not too hard, thankfully. And you get this kind of horrifying image and for this one definitely recommend putting plastic under her leg because her right breast um, This took quite a lot of time. I really think I don't know if I just angled this completely wrong But it was just really hard to kind of tuck it under there. So yeah, definitely take your time with this um and definitely put a piece of plastic on her leg so you don't end up like rubbing the paint off the front part of the right breast cup. Um, eventually it's supposed to give and it goes in. Again, I don't know why this was so hard. Like this has to be the hardest assembly. So yeah, there it goes, slips in easily. I take out the plastic and her, you know, left breast cup, hell of a lot easier, but it does kind of like droop a little bit because the magnet isn't 100% strong. And then simply, once you're done with that, you put the leg back on. Try to be careful because I think the black fishnets can stain the leg if you're not careful. So I just, you know, be careful when doing that. You don't want to rub it too hard. And then, you know, you just simply press that little extra bit right in. So yeah, pretty nice and easy for the most part with putting the leg back on. And then we have her antenna. Both are very well done overall. I really love the design with the heart. And yeah, overall very nice. They got the sort of floppy ear like a bee does, which I do quite like. So yes, overall design for this character I really do love. Again, it's a bee. It's definitely like unique and all of the little details of the bee are in this design. And yeah, it's definitely one of my new favorite binding figures for that reason, plus the extra little parts that she comes with to, you know, make her stand out from the rest. And yeah, you know, simple ears to put in overall. Definitely a very easy step. And then after that, we are moving on to actually her accessories. So we're starting off with the honey that goes in the wine glass. Again, you know, transparent. Um, I feel like it definitely does look like honey and not something else. But yeah, the wine glass as well. And you just simply put that in. Now this wine glass, you can of course, um, you pull it apart, it's not too hard. Uh, definitely be careful if you do drop this though, because you can make a mark on it. And you know, that's not that good, especially because it's a transparent piece. And her hands, very nice and delicate and elegant, and I do like the shine on the nails. I guess she has like, you know, maybe just like no nail polish on, but it's like nice and shiny. Now you do kind of have to tuck this in under the hand, which isn't too bad. Uh, you do kind of have to push the bottom part like quite up on her hand and to exchange hands it's very easy you just simply take out one hand and we have the other hand that is used to hold uh, the honey 
that's dripping from her hand. Again, very nice pose overall, very nice paint work on the nails, and yeah, pretty easy to um, assemble and disassemble the hands. You simply gotta push it all the way back in. And then lastly, we have the honey that's supposed to drip from her hands. This one is supposed to go on one of her fingers. It's very tiny, so definitely don't want to lose this piece. This one is just supposed to go into the palm of her hand. And, you know, it's not too hard to obviously put it together. Um, I did accidentally kind of drop the one that goes on her finger a few times. You kind of have to balance it slightly. <laughs> I like that. Um, but yeah, not too bad. And yeah, so that pretty much concludes the assembly for the Queen Bee figure. Now we're moving on to Mio Blue, who has a lot less instructions to her, so pretty easy assembly for this one, nothing too strenuous, and yeah, so that's how she comes out of the box, and we have her crotch covering, which does have a peg to it where the diamond is, so simply, you take that first little diamond off right there, very tiny piece, so definitely don't lose it if you want to display her without the covering. And yeah, you simply just sort of slide that into there and it should easily pop in. Not too bad overall. After that, we have the two breast cups that are down so you can, you know, see her exposed. Really like the blue shading to it. it has a very nice sort of glossy, glittery effect to it along with the gold. And here are her breast cups if you want to cover the nips. So yeah. Overall, you know, very nice. Um, I believe these ones aren't actually labeled, which is right and left. Um, there were times when I was assembling her on camera, I had to kind of reset because I didn't know which goes where. Yeah, so she actually comes with these plastic um, pieces and when she comes out of the box, they're kind of slotted into where the cups are supposed to go, so you just take those out. And yeah, you put those in, very simple. And after that, we have the ears. So yeah, very nice shading of black. I noticed that it's like darker on the edges and kind of lighter in the middle. And you have some darker blue to lighter blue. And yeah, ears are very well done overall. Oh, you can, you can kind of tell where these go on which side of the head because of the fluff. One has kind of an indent. So yeah, again, the temporary pegs and easily, you know, easy to slide these in overall. So yeah, very painless assembly for Mio Blue compared to the Queen Bee figure, and yeah, so that is Mio Blue completely assembled. So now we're going into figure b-roll, starting off with the Queen Bee Honey figure, and I think she's overall very fantastic. I am very happy to have this figure in my collection. I think her outfit design is stunning in person, and there's just like a lot of nice details on her. Like, you know, the wings, the stinger on the back. I do like the overall color scheme with the black, the yellow, and then the pops of green in some areas. And yeah, so I just really enjoy this figure overall. Uh, she does have some nice shading in the yellow area, so there's like hints of orange in there, which I think is a nice touch. It gives the outfit a little bit more depth. The hair I say is pretty nice overall with the sculpt and I do kind of like the pink on the inside. Uh, it isn't really too clean on like the top parts of her head but it's not too awful unless you look up really close. And she just has a very nice body sculpt overall. And I do like the gold that they use, it's pretty nice overall. I didn't really notice any like paint defects on mine really, you know, besides like the hair. I'm, I'm talking about mostly the outfit and yeah there's just so many nice details on her that I really like. The stinger kind of keeps her off. I am wondering if that's going to be okay over time because it does support the figure so I hope it doesn't possibly break with her weight over time. Uh, maybe the wings themselves could use maybe a little bit more shading. I know they're a translucent piece but maybe some darker yellow or so or at least darker yellow on the veins to kind of highlight them. And maybe some of the green areas on her um, could have had some like darker green shading along the edges. And yeah, the wine glass is a very nice touch with the honey in it. I did accidentally kind of dropped it a little bit and I did end up making a mark on it. So I just be careful about that. Thankfully, I could just turn it one way towards her so you don't really see it. And her face is absolutely wonderful. I really like her sort of soft, like kind expression that she has. 
And the choker is a nice touch as well. I love figures with chokers. And of course, the only other interchangeable part I can really show, which is the honey in her hand. So yeah, fantastic binding figure overall. So now we're moving on to the Mio Blue Binding Bunny, and overall, very gorgeous, very fantastic, very confident looking binding figure, and an excellent translation of Sakiya Mama's character illustration into figure form. I think she looks absolutely gorgeous, and you know, I'm very happy to have her for a relatively, you know, good price from where I got her from. And yeah, just her face is fantastic. I love the details on there, and especially her eyes, because I feel like that's definitely a highlight to Saki and Mama figures are the eyes. There's just so much detail in them. The body sculpt is fantastic overall. I just like the sculpting on her with like her back muscles and such. And yeah, just the pose overall, it just exudes confidence, which I do quite like. And especially next to the Caroline Yuri, they just are two binding bunnies that exude a lot of confidence, which I do quite like. And yeah, going down, uh, there are some like details with the sculpt on like her stockings a little bit, the top part that kind of connects where the blue gem is. It kind of looks like it's like taut, which I think is a nice touch. Um, and yeah, so other design elements to the figure. She has a very nice sort of bow tie, ears, pretty simple, but you know, I feel like they're quite nice. I do like the blue overall. The hair, I feel like maybe could have been a little bit better. Um, the shading is nice. I just wish that maybe some of the hair strands were a little bit more sharper. And now this part right here was kind of the shading on the breast where it was a little bit too red. I mean, it's kind of hard to see on my camera, but it is there. And this one, just the black kind of bleeded a little bit onto her skin, which is a little bit unfortunate, but of course, you only really see that up close. And a little bit of ink or paint bleeding from the blue onto the gold. Now, I had this little w weird issue that I'll come up in a bit, but for some reason, there is something inside of her that's a little bit broken. Uh, I didn't notice anything outside the figure, but something, like, I don't know, a piece of her inside just broke and she just kind of rattles when I shake her, so um, ignore this kind of weird footage that I'm doing, but just to show that mine kind of had that little issue. And here she is next to you, Caroline Yuri. Absolutely gorgeous next to each other. I kind of like having Mio to the left and Caroline to the right, just so they're kind of like looking at each other. They are just oh, absolutely gorgeous together. I really love these two Binding Bunnies. Definitely like in my top 10 for like one fourth figures overall. And of course I got to put the two that I reviewed today together. So yeah, very gorgeous Binding Bunnies that I picked up. I think they look very nice together. I love both of their designs and I highly recommend picking both of these guys up and thankfully what I'm seeing right now, their prices are actually not too bad. It's just going to be the shipping. So yes, very nice binding bunnies overall. So now we're moving on to my overall thoughts and we're going to start with the uh, Queen Bee Honey figure first. I think she's absolutely fantastic overall. Even though she got delayed a few times, I feel like she was worth the wait overall. And yeah, the design is gorgeous. The shading in the various areas are fantastic. The way she looks, she just looks so like very calm and serene and you know, gorgeous. And the overall body sculpt is absolutely fantastic. And of course I do like the additional little pieces that she comes with, even though at least in the, you know, safer work version of this video, you know, they're a nice touch to include if you want to, you know, exchange parts for this figure. So for maybe some minor nitpicks for this figure is that the pink parts of the hair, I feel like they're not really the cleanest in the world, like even on like the top part of her head and even on like the very ends of her hair, like where you can actually see it, it doesn't look the cleanest, which is a little bit unfortunate. And I have to say maybe the other nitpick is maybe some areas could have used a little bit more shading. It's mostly, I feel, in the green and maybe even her wings. For the green areas, maybe a little bit of like darker shading on the edge of it. I think there is, once again, some yellow kind of in the middle, but I don't know. To me, it looks for the most part that they just use a, you know, one color 
for the green parts. And the other one is that maybe the translucent wings could have used a little bit more shading. I'd say it's specifically on like the vein parts of the figure to make them kind of pop out a little bit more. But other than those two nitpicks, i say she's like fantastic. You know, there isn't really any other issues I saw on this figure that would warrant me to, you know, point them out. So yes, the Queen Bee figure, if you like bee-themed figures or you like sort of sweet-themed figures, highly recommend her. I think she turned out absolutely gorgeous. So now we're moving on to the Mio Blue Binding Bunny, and once again, a fantastic translation of the original illustration by Sakia Mama into figure form. Her pose really has, like, confidence to it, and just the overall sculpt is fantastically done. I really like the blue, gold, white, and black color scheme, and of course, there was some nice shading in the areas, such as her outfit and her hair to provide some depth. And her face is fantastic, with all the little details in her eyes being translated very well, and, you know, nothing too messy there overall. Now, I do have a little bit more nitpicks with this one compared to the Queen Bee. Uh, for this Neo Blue figure, there is some paint bleeding, at least on my copy, like for instance on like the black areas kind of went onto the skin, and even some of the sort of diamond shaped um, blue pieces on like top of like the little gold piece, um, they kind of bled into each other, well more like the blue bled into the gold, which was a little bit unfortunate. Again, it's not awful at a distance, but if you look up close you can definitely tell that it's kind of bleeding onto the wrong area. Uh, the hair sculpt I think could have been a little bit better. Um, it feels a little bit blunt at the ends, which I'm not too big a fan of. Uh, could have been maybe a little bit more sharper, a little bit more clean looking. So also like on her left breast specifically, um, there was just like a, you know, some deep red shading which I think was a little bit too high up on her. Uh, the cup doesn't really cover that too much, which I'm not the biggest fan of. I wish they kind of, at least on my copy, uh, toned down that, you know, red part a little bit so, you know, the breastplate actually covers it. Um, so there was that. And I guess this is my copy of the figure's issue. I don't know if anyone else has this issue, but that rattling that you heard before, um, something, I guess, broke on the inside. Thankfully, I don't think it's anything too serious that she's just gonna, like, fall apart all of a sudden. I guess just something happened and it's... she can rattle. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. It's kind of weird, but, you know, it doesn't really bother me too much. And I'm interested if anyone else possibly has that issue or my copy just had something break on the inside. But overall, even with those minor issues, I think she's very fantastic in person and a perfect pair up for the Caroline Fury Binding Bunny. Whether you get the OG Caroline or the upcoming tan version, I think these two are going to look absolutely fantastic together if you have them both in your collection. Now moving on to aftermarket prices. So again, I'm going to start off with the Queen Bee Honey figure. I'm looking at Bai uh, Yahoo Japan auctions and pricing wise, I'm seeing her mostly for under 400 USD, close to 300 USD, which I think is overall fantastic, especially because of the shipping. Now be warned when you use Bai you can't really search up binding figures easily. I literally had to look at the listings for another sort of lewd figure and then, you know, put the Queen Bee Honey figure, Japanese name, in the search, you know, along with binding, and search results pop up. And there are some instances where you can't place bids on, like, lewd figures. Um, I wasn't really logged on, so that might be different, but just be warned about that. There are a lot of options on Bai, but you might not be able to get these shipped to your country, you know, especially if you live outside of Japan. But overall, the price is, you know, if you get her for under 300 USD, I feel like that's a steal, especially with her bonus postcard, which I do see some listings for. So also, there weren't any on Mercari for uh, both the Mio Blue and the Queen Bee Honey, so I'll just point that out right now. Uh, there is one listing for the Queen Bee on Mandarake where she's like 40,000 yen, 
be warned, the shipping to the US is over $100. Um, of course, I'll show the prices to the United States, but it's not really the best. I probably would definitely skip Mondarake unless this is like your last resort. And Ami Ami actually has her on there uh, pre-owned. Uh, it does come with the postcard, by the way, which I think is quite nice. And also, I thought I might as well just show up some My Figure collection uh, ads for the figure. So, pretty much all of them are under 400 USD without shipping. So, there are those options if you want to pick her up from any uh, My Figure collection users. So now we're moving on to the Mio Blue figure aftermarket wise and thankfully she didn't really shoot up in price like the Caroline Yuri bunny and pretty much most of the listings I'm seeing is under 300 USD which is pretty good overall. Someone did list her for almost 500 USD which is ridiculous but yeah. You got some nice options if you are able to get her off of Yahoo Japan auctions and, you know, some of them do of course come with the bonus postcard. Unfortunately, on Mandarake, there was like a listing for her but they sold out and there is one person selling her on My Figure Collection. Now note, this doesn't come with the tapestry. I don't know why this person put like the tapestry as part of the listing, which is kind of weird. You can easily search up the figure, but this listing is of the figure itself. So just heads up on that. It is very expensive though. So yes, overall two very gorgeous binding figures. I really love these two for different reasons. And thankfully, again, their aftermarket prices aren't horrendous. But again, even with those base prices, the shipping from Japan is going to be a little bit crazy. So just a heads up on that. So I overall hope that my review of these two lovely binding figures helped in your decision on whether or not you want to pick one of the two up or not, or maybe both, if you felt like going for both of these. So yes, finally at the outro, at least at the time I'm recording this video, because it was kind of a lot, you know, especially unboxing two one-fourth figures, but yeah. So, you know, starting off with, of course, the Queen Bee figure. I really do love her overall. I think the design is fantastic. I thought, you know, the bee theme is obviously quite unique and different, and I feel like, at least from looking at her first glance, I think she turned out pretty well. Obviously, um, during my unboxing, there were some small, like, nitpicks and issues. Um, I also did manage to get the cup to look right. You do kind of just have to push the wine glass a little further up in her hand. And that definitely looks a lot better. And yeah, overall, very happy to have this in my collection. Do I kind of wish I had the postcard? You know, maybe because again, I do like collecting those. But, you know, at the end of the day, I feel like, you know, I definitely want to have the figure itself. And yeah, just fantastic overall. And I'd say overall, like an excellent translation of that original illustration into figure form. I think she looks absolutely fantastic. Also, an, <laughs> kind of a nice, somewhat lewd addition to my Sweets theme collection. So yes, of course, I cannot forget about Miss Mio Blue, and overall, absolutely fantastic. I think she looks gorgeous. I really do love the blue and gold to her. Um, I don't know, that's just like a very nice color scheme, and the face is fantastically done. I love her eyes, just the details in it are fantastic. And yeah, easy assembly too, um, nothing too strenuous overall. And yeah, just overall happy to have her next to Caroline Yuri. And you know, surprisingly, I feel like she doesn't really take up too much space, which is nice. Like I have this small section on the corner of my shelf at the bottom and she fits in perfectly there. So yeah, <laughs> obviously compared to Caroline Yuri with her long hair that just takes up a lot of horizontal space. You know, I feel like this one is, you know, pretty space friendly for a one-fourth binding figure. So yes, overall, very happy to have this in my collection. I think she will look, you know, she looks absolutely stunning next to Caroline Yuri and yeah, so very gorgeous, gorgeous character design overall. So yeah, I hope I don't look like too much of a hot mess. Again, it's summer, I had to turn off the AC, so you know, I'm thankfully done with this video and yeah so I'm curious to see which one of the two figures that I unboxed today were your favorites 
Um, obviously, I like these both for different reasons. For Miss Honey, it was just the character design. It's not obviously a bunny. And, you know, it's kind of a sweet theme figure as well. And for Meal Blue, just the overall character design. And of course, it's made by Saki Amamu, who is very, like, colorful art, which I do love. So overall, I'm very happy to have these two very lovely ladies added to my collection. So yes, that concludes this video. Thank you all so much for watching, however long this is going to be. And I hope you all have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or night wherever you are, and take it easy. Goodbye! So of course, before I end the video, I would like to give a shout out to my Sakura supporter patrons, and that includes Simon Ta. Thank you so much again for taking the time to donate to my Patreon, and I hope you do like the art piece that I made for you. So yes, I wish you all the best. And yeah, that overall concludes the video at this point, so I hope you all have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or night wherever you are, and once again, take it easy. Goodbye!